So first, what a beautiful peloton of people. Thank you so much, friends, um, for showing up for tonight's gathering. Um, whether this is your first time, you drop by periodically, or you're a regular, I am really grateful and touched that you're here tonight to experience uh, wisdom of the wheel. For those who don't know, I am Reverend Julie Brooks, and I'm working in tandem tonight with my Zoom stoker and friend David, Renata. So David, thank you again for your help tonight. Wisdom traditions all over the world refer to the wheel. Ezekiel's wheel within a wheel in Christianity is said to represent the cycle of life and the path we travel through this world and into the afterlife. In Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism, Dharma Chakra, or Wheel of Dharma, signifies the perfection and the essentials of Buddhist teachings. The Wheel of the Year, used by modern pagans, represents the cycle of the seasons. The Medicine Wheel, among various Native American peoples, is used to signify health and healing. And my beloved brother and fellow One Spirit grad, yes, you, Reverend Rob Spencer, refers to the wagon wheel to signify the coming together of all of the world's wisdom traditions. Now for me, and for our purposes here tonight, the wheel and specifically the bicycle wheel, as it's represented in Taoism and Zen Buddhism, is what resonates most deeply for me. David, would you pull up slide number 16? Lao Tzu writes in the Tao Te Ching verse 11, 30 spokes share the hub of the wheel, yet it is its center that makes it useful. The wheel as a whole is dynamic. It moves, rotates, revolves. It's going somewhere. It's, it's a process in motion. The wheel is also made up of three components, the rim, spokes, and the hub. David, would you pull up number 17, slide 17? So the rim in its true form is round. It's what actually rolls, what moves us along. Metaphorically, the rim represents our perfection in the universe and our connection to the ground beneath us. With regards to contemplative practices, the, 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 the rim holds our practice together, representing our balance, our concentration in movement. The spokes keep the rim and thus the wheel aligned, round, able to move smoothly and efficiently. There are a number of spokes in any given wheel and they all hold, distribute and balance an equal amount of energy tension or weight. In contemplation, the spokes might signify the different elements of our practice, the different things we do to stay balanced. Now, one, when one of the spokes is bent or even broken, all of the spokes and thus the rim is affected, making the whole wheel a bit wobbly, unbalanced. The energy tension and weight is now not equally distributed. We speak then in bicycling of truing the spokes, adjusting them, tweaking them, realigning them so that they, the rim, and ultimately the whole wheel is made perfectly round, balanced, and able to roll smoothly again. And isn't this what we do in and with our spiritual practices? We practice, we tweak, we realign, we seek balance. Now, finally, the hub with which the spokes and the rim are unified. The hub is at the epicenter of the wheel. It is still, it doesn't bob around. It's singular, there's only one, and it is empty. Tom Bisio writes, quote, the perfect circular movement and continuous stability of the wheel is anchored in the stillness of the hub. The hub then is the ultimate source. It is the one true thing that exists at the heart of the wheel that truly makes the wheel a wheel. Thank you, David. You can take that slide down. Now, Bicycling, or sacred cycling for me, is a spiritual practice, wherein the bike is a tool in which I seek to mindfully balance the dynamic and active art of engaging with the physical landscape, coupled with the contemplative nature and open-heartedness 
of being and breathing. It is as my sweet sister, Reverend Karen Bonifacino says, mindful movement, distilling attention, deepening awareness, and developing an ability to merge more intentionally with the sacred and sublime. Now, when I'm on my bike, there are certainly times when I'm distracted or disturbed by the behavior of maybe a motorist swerving in front of me or an animal crossing my path. And in those moments, after I've felt the effects of and responded to whatever might have just happened, I try to remember to come back to the hub. I try to remember to return to the emptiness, the stillness, to my source, to concentrating on being in, in and with the landscape that lays before me and lies within me. So tonight, in the time that's left, I want to invite you to experience coming back to the hub, connecting with emptiness, stillness, your one true source. I'll offer a few practices, spokes on our collective wheel, if you will, that I use before, during, or after my rides, and we'll enjoy some spaciousness, some time to be and breathe. We'll also have some time to share some of our reflections or questions with one another. Now, I'd like to begin by reciting a meta or um, sharing a meta or loving kindness prayer with you that I always say before mounting my metal mare. I'll invite you to follow along and then immediately following our meta, I'd like to share a kind of Vela Divina with you, experiencing the sacred cycling of Lisa Newbert, who elegantly chronicles her experience of the sacred and sublime on her bicycle while riding out to the Great Salt Lake in Utah. After watching and listening to Lisa's poetic pedal, um, we'll have a few minutes of silence wherein I encourage you to simply sit, breathe, and come back to the hub. So David, will you um, pull up slide number 18? May I be safe, may I be strong, may I be steady, May I be soulful. May you be safe. May you be strong. May you be steady. May you be soulful. May we be safe. May we be strong. May we be steady. May we be soulful. May all be safe. May all be strong. May all be steady. May all be soulful. I love this time of year. I call it the quiet season. I love riding out to the Great Salt Lake through the farmland where there is little or no traffic. I rarely see other riders, but the ones I do see are serious ones like me. I never see other women riders. I must be the only crazy one. It's cold, but layering almost eliminates the bite of the wind. During my ride, I am rewarded with colors, smells, and sounds that few others experience. There is so much to see. The 
Halloween candy is gone. And so are the showy colors of leaves on the trees. They have been replaced with quiet golds and browns that whisper in the wind. As I ride along, the musty smell of fallen leaves rises up from the ground with a pleasant aroma, filling me with memories of walking through mountains during deer hunts long, long ago. All of the trees reach their dark limbs high in the sky, gently waving in the late fall breeze. Their beauty rivals that of their showier predecessors but in a quiet way. The restful season has come. Hay bales are waiting in the fields to be gathered, sitting patiently like soldiers in rows along the fences. Cornfields are also at rest now. Only stubble remains in endless rows that reach out to the horizon. Freshly turned earth in other fields reveals dark brown richness, waiting for snow to blanket it with quiet stillness and peace. The furrows will wait for spring to awaken from the slumber of freezing winter nights that will come. Geese fly above me as I ride, calling to each other as they fly. Hurry, they say. Hurry, must hurry, to warmer places to rest for the winter. I love their graceful wings and long curved necks that stretch out in earnest as they fly towards the lake to land and rest before resuming their long journey southward. I often wish I could join them and fly far, far away to lands unknown and unseen. I ride by pumpkin fields with hundreds of pumpkins that have not yet been harvested. Perhaps they will sprout next year and make another field of yellow and orange for children to run through and pick out the biggest and best lantern for their holiday of mischief. But for now, it is filled only with memories and quietly passes on. The sun swiftly moves towards the horizon, and I finally reach the lake edge. No other time of day can rival the colors of the evening sun. The hills on Antelope Island are a rich chestnut brown, and beckon me to come and explore their secrets, but I cannot. Time is no longer on my side, and I must return before the evening light is gone. Reluctantly, I turn away from this scene of gold and orange and ride towards home. I love this time of year.
a Zen Khan. A Zen teacher saw five of his students return from the market riding their bicycles. When they had dismounted, the teacher asked the students, why are you riding your bicycles? The first student replied, the bicycle is carrying this sack of potatoes. I'm glad that I do not have to carry them on my back. The teacher praised the student saying, you are a smart boy. When you grow old, you will not walk hunched over as I do. The second student replied, I love to watch the trees and fields pass by as I roll down the path. The teacher commended the student. Your eyes are open and you see the world. The third student replied, when I ride my bicycle, I am content to chant. The teacher gave praise to the third student. Your mind will roll with the ease of a newly trued wheel. The fourth student answered, riding my bicycle, I live in harmony with all beings. The teacher was pleased and said, you are riding on the golden path of non-harming. The fifth student replied, I ride my bicycle to ride my bicycle. The teacher went and sat at the feet of the fifth student and said, I am your disciple. I'd like to invite you all again to be and breathe for the next few minutes. If you find yourself thinking about or reflecting on the cone, just come back to the hub, being and breathing. We can start the video, David.
So Albert Einstein once noted, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. I'd like to open up our space right now and invite us to explore a few questions about balance. Um, I think that you can, David will uh, unmute us all and you can, or, or, or make it so that you can unmute yourself. So if you have something you'd like to share, um, I'd love to hear it. Um, I guess the question I'll ask is how do you seek and sustain balance in your life? Or how does your spiritual practice help you to tweak things in your life? I'll jump in. Um, Thanks, Susie. When, when I'm able to meditate, which is sporadically, but when I do so, I feel very much like it's uh, leaving the rim and coming closer and closer into the hub. And physically, the sort of hara, central chakras. So there is a, a stilling. And I'd never thought of it this way. So I really appreciate your teaching. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I really love this metaphor. And I'm just playing with it. So I don't know if I'm really answering the question. But I'm just playing with how you're sharing um, the center point being still, the hub being still, and then whatever's swirling around on the edge can be swirling around on the edge. Um, so I guess um, as, as um, Susie just shared, yeah, it's, it's in terms of how I come back to my balance, it's definitely my meditation practice will bring me back to that hub out of the swirl of, of whatever is happening in my life and just coming to the center point. Um, I love how you shared that. It, it, and, and like this, this overlay of the mindful movement on top of that, I don't cycle myself so much, but um, I've engaged in other sports where, yeah, that, that ability to be outside and be in your center, center and, and moving your body. It's just really beautiful. And I, I appreciate how you share that and how you conceive of the whole um, endeavor. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, some of us are familiar with um, flow or those of us who are athletes know what it's like to be in the zone. Um, and so this is for me, flow and in the zone. And, and then there's another piece of it, which is a, the connection with not only my center and the, and the landscape, but what is sacred about the landscape and my, my source, the great mystery. So that's, it's all part of that. It could be flow, it could be um, being in the zone, but there's this, this, and there's this just multi-layered connection um, that I'm still, that, that my understanding of that is still evolving. I've had the advantage of hearing you talk about this for a long time and as we walk in the morning, um, really talking about the whole concept of what it means to be in the moment or in the spirit. Um, and although I had to give up bicycling because of my hip this year, um, I can really relate as I've taken up swimming, what it feels like just to be moving through water or um, the loving the feel of that, like you might like the feel of the wind. And, um, but I was describing the problems I was having that, you know, that sometimes as I'm moving through the water, I just, it brings up the image of almost drowning. Then I feel myself choking as I had once. And, and um, you're saying, well, just go back to the hub, go back to the center, go back to your breath. And rather than making it a system of counting laps or counting strokes or whatever, which would often lead to feeling more out of breath and feeling less, 
really being okay, it's okay, I can come back to the breath, I can come back to the center, I can breathe, I can let all of those other thoughts go away. Um, I'm not drowning. I'm, I'm, I'm moving and the, the, the lovelier feelings of that come in and not, not the panic. So constantly coming back to the breath, coming back to the center, feeling one, feeling one with. Um, and that's been really helpful. So thank you. For me, um... There's something about movement, for sure. If I'm feeling out of out of harmony, having a walk or or going to exercise, just moving my body helps me to mentally move myself, also. But in a greater way, I think the way I take my mind from being full of all of the chaos or the busyness or the whatever is overwhelming me and bring that down. It's more of a meditation. It's a breath. It's noticing a, a bird sound or looking at a plant. You know, it's really kind of trimming down what I'm going to focus on. And if I can do that, if I can't get out for a walk, that can bring me right down to just the calm, empty, not empty, but that calm center and help me sort of find my resilience to move my way through the chaos after that. Thank you. You know, I, so I'm looking at this beautiful sea of faces and um, I, I, I'm thinking about, you know, my tool is a bicycle. Um, Joellen talked about swimming. I also know that a tool of hers is her camera. I see two um, drummers, at least two. I'm a drummer, and there is something about hitting the head of a drum and connecting with the drum. I, what, what, um, and I'm talking about you, Marsha and Leslie, um, what tools, what tools are useful or helpful um, to you in terms of experiencing connection, stillness, um, oneness, balance. For some of us, it might be a cushion. You can't see my cushion, but it's right over there. You know, what are, what are some tools that are useful to you? in your spiritual practice, or maybe not even in your intentional spiritual practice through the day, helping you come back to your center. I've just started doing some Qigong and that's really forced me to slow down and move slowly and be quiet. And it's a, you know, a basic beginner. So we, we do the elements and we, we learned a, like a first thing in the morning, wake up thing to get your energy moving. And that, that feels really good. Mm, nice. Something new. Nice. Thank you. Speaking of feeling just a little off balance, I do want to own something right now. Emma, I know exactly who you are. <laughs> I just wanted to own that. When I realized that I used the wrong name, I felt a little bit off balance, so I apologize. I love that you're here. Um, most of my practices are done motionless, um, but the ones that involve movement, um, I'm, I'm blessed to have a painful condition in my bones that makes me walk mindfully. Um, so that's very, very helpful. And even before I had that issue, I started and continue to do 
a mindful archery practice as well, which is a, a tool that involves movement, but still brings me to that center. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Haven't been on a bicycle for a while. <laughs> and yet the wheel is so central to, um, to who you are. Hi, thank you so much, Julie, for this. I didn't know what was going to come up for me, as you say. Um, I'm quite different than everybody else, I think, who has mentioned something. I'm, of course, a physical being. I'm not um, an athlete at all, never have been. And yes, of course, balancing, the balancing act of living involves physical activity. But for me, it's mostly up here in my, in, in my head. And my spiritual practice, the, the big one right now is writing. And at the, by the end of the day, I have focused myself enough. I'm going to visualize the hub now when I do this, because I either pull something together that I write about, about my day, or just about something that's going on for me maybe for a while but I just love the image of just pulling in and focusing on that hub whatever the hub is for the day so I thank you for that and that is my tool I just I also wanted to share since you're asking for little tidbits that may not have to do with your question I am totally captivated and I've heard Zen stories before, but this one I had not. Hmm. And uh, I ride a bicycle because I ride a bicycle or I ride a bicycle to ride a bicycle. And, and the teacher becomes the disciple. It's, it's just, oh my goodness. And what's happening is it's going over around in my head like a broken record. <laughs> Ha ha, round and round and round and round. So I love it. And the last thing is, I don't know why I had this ex experience, but when you asked David to put on that last image, I think we were all sort of meditating and thinking, and I saw this, I was very attracted to the very strong sense, the orb of light at the top. Mm -hmm. And I noticing the little bubbles and orbs coming down, including some rays, but I want to go the other direction and go up and up and up to see if in fact it's an orb or is it an opening to something else? And I don't know why I had that experience and I'm not sure it has anything to do with the wheel, but I kind of honor myself for acknowledging that my energy is in the, a different direction than I think the, the, um, the image itself was suggesting. Anyway, mm -hmm. not for better or worse, just for me. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Judith. And I, I love that that's about connect. That what resonates for me is it's about connection. Um, whether it's up or down or around or so I love that thank you thank you Claudia Hi. Um, thank you for bringing this beautiful subject I love the way you framed everything what keeps coming up for me which you've not specifically mentioned when I keep thinking of the wheel I keep thinking also about a journey so it's somewhat about balance, but I'm also thinking about, you know, where, where does this turning take me? Mm. There's something very enticing about the invitation to movement while keeping balance and harmony. So thank you for bringing that image up for me. Absolutely. Thank you. Wisdom of the wheel part two. <laughs> um, 
thank you all. I'm um, Emma. You raised your hand. I did. Yes. Would you like to share? Sure. Um, I think when I've thought of the wheel, I sort of think about it um, a bit with a different nuance. Like the center of the wheel for me is is spirit. And those spokes are our connection to spirit. And we're kind of all on the outside of it as we're going through our, you know, our, our days and, and months and years here on Earth School. Um, you know, and just that constant back and forth that we have and that connection to spirit. And that's for me what the wheel has, has always represented. Um, you know, and, and that connection that that yes, we might be on the outside and feeling like we're, we're the singular entity here, but yet we have through that connection of spirit connection to everyone else. Um, and I think that that has really driven um, part of my practice to, to, to look at who I am and, and how I connect to other people and, and how I can connect to other people and, and how I can also um, give grace and forgiveness in places where um, I might not have, have I, had I not felt like we're all in this together and part of a collective consciousness. So, thank you. You're welcome. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So as we start to bring this evening's um, gathering to a close, I would like to share one last poem. Um, so David, would you bring up slide number 21? Ride like a river. Ride like a river, sit in your saddle with a sense of focus and fortitude, a sense of gentleness and joy. Be steady, be calm, be flexible and at ease in your awareness. No matter how many obstacles appear, no matter how fast others may be moving, no matter how rough the road may feel, no matter how choppy the course, be open to everything and ride like a river. I, again, am so grateful for your all being here tonight. Um, we'll end with, may your hearts and minds be balanced and may love always guide your ways. Um, after the last slide that Dave will pull up in a moment, our cat and music are gathering to an end. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can go ahead and start now, David. Thank you. And bring up slide 22. Mm -hmm.